A nickel bag gets sold in the park. I want in. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Shice Buzz, Mr. Aikiki. I'm back on Heavy Smoke. We live at the Smokers Club headquarters. You already know what it is. Today, I got Mr. Frosty himself. Nero, what's up, baby? Hey, bro. It's the vibes. <laughs> Double pop, you know what I mean? Bay shit, New York shit. We're shaking, man. I had to come sit down. Come, you feel me? Elaborate, chop it up with Big Brother. You already Shout know. The Smokers Club, Shice Bubs having me. Just here, you feel me? Right now, working. right now, I'm smoking on this good Red Devil right now. Demon Frost. Demon Frost. Shit, Dig shit gas. He bought me a couple other good packs right here. Cartier glasses. You know what I'm saying? What you call this pack right here? That's the Ice Buffies right there. The Ice Buffies, front and back. Good packaging. You know this is heavy smoke, music, art, and fashion fueled yeah. by cannabis. You know what I'm saying? White good. Frosties. The white Frosties. Yeah, we brought the whole line up. The pink Frosties. We lit. So let's take us back. Let's take us back to the beginning. You know what I'm saying? This 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 podcast has, you know, been showcasing basically legacy operators in the game. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, for real. People who've been putting in work, you know what I'm saying? You got your own brand, Frosties. Um, how long have you been in the in in the weed um game? I'm gonna say realistically fully into it, like twenty sixteen. 2016. Yeah. You know, I'm younger cat, you know, I just had to start getting my feet wet up into it. You know what I'm saying? Um, linked up with the big homie out the city, San Francisco, J.O. He was growing with Jigga and like Sherbinsky, Sirius and all that. Shout out to Riddles. <laughs> so, you know, whenever I got with him, you know, I was curious. He was getting my feet wet, picking his brain on how to grow. He telling me and schooling me on the whole situation, you know, having the right area, the temperature in the room, all the good soil. Oh, he was giving you a growth course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was. That's what a real OG does, does right? Mm -hmm. Join the game. Because it's like everybody want to learn how to grow weed. Mm -hmm. you smoke weed, you want to know how to grow that shit. Like, how would you not? You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. who don't want to be their own consumer? You know what I'm saying? So, you would be surprised. Because in New York, you know, we don't really have, we didn't really get the opportunity yeah, exactly. to be that, to, to play that, that seat. I know the real. You know what I'm saying? So when was the first time you smoked a blunt? I'm going to say like middle school. Middle school? About like seventh grade, seventh school grade. dance type shit. Like, well, you was a young boy. You was, you was young out here. You was about 12 years old. About 12, 13, something like that. Like, mm -hmm. Just being a badass with the homies, trying to have some fun. Right. But then, you know. As a nigga got older, that shit, you feel me? It's a medicine. And it bring out creativity out of a nigga, so. Right. Nigga got more in tune with it. And nigga just like. You play sports in high school? I play football. Okay. Yeah, play. That's another thing in, in New York, like, being from Manhattan, we don't got football team. basketball. Yeah, yeah we don't got no football team. We had like two football teams back in the days, like Kennedy and, and, and another high school, I forget, but. You know what I'm saying? We didn't get the opportunity to play football either. You dig what I'm saying? What, what, what song was you listening to back in the days when you smoked the blunt? Because I know you were listening to some rap shit. Well, it's so much. You know, we, from the Bay, it's a, I got five on it. Four. <laughs> yeah. All that shit. We listening to uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. They spitting that good shit. Snoop Dogg, all that. You know, that's probably the shit we was listening to if we were getting high back then. When did you realize you'd get some money off this weed shit? I mean, it's like different stages because sometimes it seemed like it wasn't a lot of money to be made and it seemed like it was. So, so I can't really call it. I say high school, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like. That's when you linked up with J.O.? When I, link, I linked up with J.O. after high school, pretty much. But uh, in high school, no, nah, I was just really like a fan of smoking. I wasn't into growing or nothing like that. I didn't take it that serious because in high school, what I'm like. You were athlete. 16, 50, yeah, I want to play football and shit. Mm -hmm. Still chasing females, all that. Like, I didn't take it that serious, but hustling and selling it, it was always a profit. You know what I'm saying? So we did whatever to get our little Jordans or whatever little cool shit that was out, the Air Forces or whatnot. So mm -hmm. 
And when did it lead into, I'm about to fuck with this? It led into that once some nigga turned like 21. You know what I mean? Nigga in the streets hustling, going down, kind of did some jail time, did a little bit, didn't want to be robbing and like fucking with the serious shit that holds so much time. Like out in Cali, cannabis ain't holding too much time. So mm-hmm. when I turned 21, that's when I got involved. I started like getting pounds, all that shit, you know what I'm saying? Multiples, like learning how to grow, all that shit. That's when we start making our money. You know, it start being like our our hood start generating all that shit. You know where I'm from, uh, out in the Bay Area, I'm from Hayward, California, out there. So mm-hmm. we made that more of a situation than anything. To grow up. That's why I was, you know it was important for me to have you up here yeah. because I know that your cuts, you know, you involved with them as far as growing them breeding them, whatever the case may be. You want to shed a little bit of light on that? Yes, for sure. On, on the importance of growing your own? On the importance of growing your own, it's like you, your own background and your own image of it. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole lot of different flavors and strains out there or whatnot, but you want to learn how to grow as your own. And like I said, be your own consumer because you don't want to always be like, hey, bro, help me do this or do that. Or you feel me? Like mm-hmm. once you figure out how to do your own situation, Ain't nothing holding you back but yourself. You know what I mean? So when you started making, when you when did you get with the Runs Gang? I got with the Runs Gang. At first, it wasn't even Runs Gang. It was it was Cookie Boys. Right. That was, was the beginning. Boys. That was the beginning. And when I I probably linked up with LB like 2014, 2015. I was like I said, I was in out of in and out of jail. I got out of jail. I had a buzz. I was rapping and shit. So I had a big buzz in my city and in my area. And like I said, we was the ones controlling a tree up in Hayward. You know what I'm saying? Like we had the bags and shit up there. So he pull up to the studio, random tip with the homie Germ Jilla. He from out of Hayward too. Clay Candy homie from T Kill and uh he basically telling him, like, man, that's one of the homies named Nero. You know what I'm saying? He fucked with the weed. He got the motion, the program, all that out here. You should get with him. This when LB came to the Bay and was, like, putting all his resources together and connecting the dots. So he come to the studio. I link up with him. He just was fucking with me off the rip. Like, everything was genuine and organic. He just was fucking with the hustle. He was fucking with, you know. The entourage that was around, the vibe, everything. So for that, he like, man, I gotta, bro, you gotta meet Ray Bama. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause at the time, they already trying to form something. As it was Cookie Boys, they still was trying to form something themselves. Like, I'm not really knowing what time it is. Like I said, I'm just hustling, getting my money, whatever, whatever. And he come with the whole concept of making a bigger situation out of this. We shit and branding it and becoming something. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really understand what he was getting at at the time, but like as time went on, started seeing the vision, start making sense. You know what I mean? But uh, so yeah, I'm linking up with LB. He bring Ray Bama and Ray Bama fucking with the whole motive too, because Ray Bama was staying out in the same area where I'm from, out in Hayward at the time. Uh, that's where we called the Ranch Mansion. It was Ray Bama crib. We go there, you feel me, chill out, smoke, put ideas together, get high, all the good shit. Then we start forming an alliance. LB brought Ski. Really, you know, Ski was involved before. With Cookie Boys. Yeah, with the Cookie Boys situation. Then I came involved. I was the younger cat, so I brought a little more light, a little more flavor, you know what I'm saying? Energy, you know what I'm saying? Right. It all just came together organically. We went on the road. We went on the road, like 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 piggybacking on what LB was saying when he was up here. We anonymous. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We uh, we damn near had to show Burner what we was made of just for him to even start fucking with us as Cookie Boys because it was love. But he had to. Sh- we had to show the hustle, ambition, and all that. You know what I'm saying? Did the uh, No Days Off tour with the homie Anonymous. Then after that, we got picked up on a big Moscato tour. 
I think it was 2016 or something. Right before COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Rocked a few shows. You know, we repping Cookie Boys, Hello Hard. You know what I'm saying? We all trying to make it make it make sense. The only way it was gonna make sense is if we came up with our own shit because as we repping Cookie Boys, we ain't really getting no percentage out of it or no ownership out of it or it's like y'all just doing it for clout. Yeah, at damn the end near. Of that. That's what it felt like at the end. That's what it damn near was. Like mm-hmm. because did it help y'all though? It for sure did. All right. It gave us a platform. That's good. That's why I, I can't even say it didn't. But off of that, you know, it engaged runs. You know what I'm saying? Ended up coming up with that situation. Everything we was doing on that tour, we took it to another tour. Luckily, we got picked up with Playboy Cardi. We ended up making that relationship with him. He just came to the filming conclusion and like, man, I fuck with y'all vibe. Y'all wanna come on tour, open up, you know what I'm saying? I think it was like the Die Lit tour or something. And off of that, like LB running with the whole Instagram page, like run this, run that, run this, run that. And it started taking off. But as we screaming runs, I'm like, what about white runs? He like, boy, you genius as fuck. <laughs> We run with another, you feel me, with another flavor. Like, I got the pink frosties, all the little shit. And we started doing that. Then off of that, I picked up the situation of branding with LB. He was teaching me that on the road. Like, it's deeper than trap. Mm-hmm. We got to have a situation on how people go fuck with us on a cult following. I'm like, shit, we rapping, we trapping. We missing. He like, we got to brand harder. So we do the merchandise. When we come with the merchandise, the shit just started going crazy. Like it became more of a weed strain to a household brand. Like everybody wanted once. once. They wanted a shirt. They want they want the whole pack. Mm-hmm. They want the shirt. They want the weed. They want the packaging, the hat, the beanie, the lighter, whatever. So, so they wanted everything. They wanted everything. And then uh at that time. I was over here scrambling, you know what I'm saying? Because LB had his hands tied with just like being a face, running the Instagram. He really couldn't do too much with the merchandise and then Ski on the same hype, you know what I mean? But it was a point in time where Ski couldn't make it on a tour. So instead of it just being all three of us, it ended up just being me and Ski. I mean, me and LB. Okay. I'm just like, damn, bro. It seemed like it's more like weight on niggas' shoulders without Ski being around. But he like, that's the beauty of it. It's a better situation for you to shine. Get your ass out there. I'm like, you right. You know what? Don't even worry about it. I got this. I found an in-house designer. My boy Brian. Shout out Brian. He keep me so stuff. He right. bring a lot of the info. Shout out B. Yeah. B get busy. He be on this shit. He got a lot of influence with this fashion shit, with you know, cannabis merchandise and stuff. Mm-hmm. But once I got him, it was a wrap. Like in-house designer, don't worry about it. I'm making jokes up, shirts, rents your life up, rents gang, all that. Like we went from having regular logo tees to like hard ass graphic tees, hard ass whatever, cut and sew, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? Fabric on point. We ain't using the cheap shirts no more. None of that shit. You know right. Everything good. So it even went from us like throwing shirts out. Now we selling shirts a hundred dollars. Hoodies two hundred dollars. Like shit just going viral. Like selling out too. Crazy. Like, every state we going to, we calling in for more merch. Ship it to the next city. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that was the beauty of that. Then once it got to that point, it was more of the what's next. So we doing runs, we doing white runs, we doing pink runs. Runs already got the name. Joe Sub done evolved. Like, bro, I got to come up with something on my own. You know what I'm saying? I had the white runs narrows cut. It was the first. Was that, was that a cut that you grew? Yeah, it was a cut I came up with. Like I was saying, I had uh, the big homie J.O. helped me with. Right. You know I'm saying, got in the field, figured that out. Then we came with Frosties. I ain't gonna lie, I didn't grow Frosties. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Frosties ended up realistically coming about with Ray Bama and Fire Society. 
he brought me a cut. He actually brought me, you feel me, a, a cross. It was Cushman's and Linen Cake. I don't think nobody was like smoking that or fucking with that cross or whatever. Mm -hmm. Once I got my hands on it, it blew so crazy, like, and it was so frosty. <laughs> she was like, yo, this shit, this shit crack, like, frosties, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he like, bro, that's good enough to work. You know what I'm saying? So we kick off Frosties with uh, Fire Society. Shout out right Bama giving us that L.E.O. That's what's up. We ended up getting that shit in the club. That shit ended up selling out same day. She ended up being a hit. We came out with the emoji. Same emoji I got on my neck type shit. Uh-huh. We just made a whole lifestyle with it as far as runs, but... We still pushing, seeing if it can be bigger or just is big. Do you do stamps? I do stamps. Do you have how many stamps? Do you have? I got like 20. 20? He said nine. Crazy. That's why that shit is going crazy like that. Yeah, like 29. Nah, not nothing hella crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm shout out to all my supporters and you know the people believe in me that let me stamp them. Right. You know, put their faith in me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what's up because. That's what this shit is about, man. You know what I'm saying? Extending the arm to those who, who are ready for the opportunity. Man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people right now that want to get in the game and, you know, you, you got in 2016. So yeah. that wasn't, to a person like me, that wasn't that long ago. But that is almost a decade ago when you really look at it as well. 2022. Yeah. So that's six yeah. years. Sure. That's six years right there. You know what I'm saying? And... That's what this shit is about too, consistency and keep being in it and keep growing. How is the how is the legal market in your existence? Do you do you see yourselves in the stores? Are you gonna open a dispensary? What's the what's the vision for Frosty's overall? Legal market, the legal market is what you make it as far as it is right now. I know I was having a conversation with you earlier about the situation with the taxes in California, and a lot of people don't want to deal with it. They feel like it's kind of a you know, a dead end. So people coming out here, Jersey, Michigan, want to do shit in Florida and all that. I mean, I'm on the same hike. Like I said, my shit was in stores at once due to COVID and all that. You know, we kind of pulled, pulled it off the shit. It was got slow. It was some worth it. Vibe, yeah. It wasn't adding up, but for sure, I'm trying to get back in stores, which I'm already on the way of doing that. But as far as opening my own dispensary, that's on the bucket list for sure. That's a goal for me. If you had any state to open it in, what would it? Where would it be? I would have said Cali. He said I would have said. I would have said Cali just for the flagship, and that's you know the home state or you whatnot. But there's a lot of us out here, you know why? And why? You like you like, me, you like NY? Yeah, yeah. They they fuck with bud. They love weed. I say shit. As far as California, mm -hmm. New York, serious about that tree, man. You feel me? Connoisseurs out here and they critiquing that shit. Like, they ain't smoke. They talking they shit. They talking they shit like they grew that shit. <laughs> New Yorkers is the biggest critics over shit that they did not grow. But <laughs> I'm just saying. But they be on they shit though. Of course, because it's a money. This is a money town. Exactly. So you got to know your shit. The you know the least you know you know and people you. It's so many smoke screens in this shit with the bags and all that. Like you do the die cuts. What happens when a company bootlegs you? Like LB said in his interview that he entice, he and um embraces it all. I do too. I'm not gonna lie. I go places. I see my the bootleg bags of mine. I don't even approach niggas and be like, yo, you got the fake shit. You need to tap in. I don't, listen, man. It's tears. Everything ain't for everybody. Get it how you live. At least you promote in my brand. Exactly. That's what you got to be happy about. At least your shit is popping enough to Do you feel like that, though? How do you feel about... Don't get me oh. wrong. At one point, it used to be like, you know, no, like, that's my money. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it comes to the point where it's like you can't get every dollar. It's impossible. But, you know, bootlegging is still promotion. You know what I'm saying hopefully they ain't bootlegging you on, a, on some bad terms. But if they bootlegging you on some good terms, you damn near thankful. Like, Pretty he much. Damn, he damn near just got Lil Wayne and shit. I wasn't there, but he was with the Frosties, you know what I'm saying? Got your name on it, got your logo. How that shit go, you know what I'm saying? 
I accept it. I mean, what, what can you do about it? Shit. Fucking not much. Just, just, <laughs> just laugh about it. You really? know, New York is a New York is a big city. I, I, what is it? Ten million, ten million people in this city. Some shit like that. Nah, nah it's like it's upwards. Of, it's upwards of eight, eight plus. I know that for sure. And maybe nine plus. So it's a lot of custies here, man. Exactly. If you try to catch ten percent of ten percent, then you're putting doing pretty good. Real shit. You know what I'm saying? If you on your feet quick enough. Do that. If you know what I mean? Well, you see out here in New York, they got people with tables on 34th Street. 40th. I see that. I see that shit. You know what I'm saying? They got the whole lineup out there, too. People ask me, they be like, yo, what's up with that? Is that real? I'll be like, I think that's a big truck. I'm like, yo, they hustling. What you expect? If, if you tell somebody, right, all right, it's legal and all that, yeah. but you're not going to jail? You know how many people was doing this shit? with the intentions of going to jail, like, you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. niggas already knew he was going to jail. Exactly. So they were still, still doing it. Still was doing shit. So now you're telling me, I'm not gonna go to jail? Green light. Oh, super green light. Super green light. I'm not trying to like, make it like they try to lock niggas up now for this shit. I'm not trying to be the voice that says that this is what it is, but it just is what it is. Same way it's a dead end in Cali, that might do. That might be the future here. Ain't no telling. It might be the future because guess what? When once you take the thrill away from something, you you you, you take the the love away from it a little bit. You dig what I'm saying? And and when you take the culture away from it and you try to, you know what I'm saying, make it this one type of thing, then you really don't have the love for it. It's really not on the bucket list no more. Same way you said like, I would have said Cali, but probably out here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they done burnt the shit up. It's like, it's no money. It's not worth it. New York didn't open up. New York is like, you know, I'm not going to say the the last market, but it's for it to open up, it kind of like puts a, the, the rest of the country at a crutch. Because like you said, the population is so crazy. Like, you said 10 million? Who else got 10 million? I'm saying, you know, people be like about New Yorkers and shit. It's like, you know, one of the big project buildings that you see 30 something floors. You dig what I'm saying? If you take that down and make that a two story house, how, how much property is that? That's a whole neighborhood right there. One yeah. building. One building is a whole neighborhood in New York. You dig what I'm saying? It's like a town, like a town. <laughs> and, and you be like, I don't fuck with nobody in my building. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like you don't fuck with the whole town and shit. You know what I'm saying? So let's talk about the um, the fashion. Let's go into that a little bit with, with Frosties and yeah. designing. You know what I'm saying? How is the merch? Where can, where can people get the merch at? Frosties merch. You know, it's all over. We, in, we got about 50, 60 locations. Uh, yeah. We all over the states. I know we got our shit in Zoomies. That that was a big one for me. I, I, I mean, don't really quote me on this, but I think Cookies was the only other cannabis brand I seen in Zoomies, honestly. You know, yeah, right here. sounds about right. Uh, we got our shit in uh, DTLRs. Uh, Jimmy Jazz. Jimmy Jazz. This shit all the way around. All Can you buy it on your website? The website is officialcut.com. Okay. I'm trying to do Frosties, but the domain was taken already. Right. So, so officialcut.com. Two T's. And what's up? What's up there on the site? Uh, you see this? Some logo tees. We got some of the Demon Frosty merchandise on there. Mm -hmm. You know, we got like a, a situation where Ren stay let us throw some of that shit up there. Some of our collab shit, or no, you know, some of the shit we might make. You know what I'm saying for them? Because that's where this shit generated. It's all love on that. You no know, two. We all type of shit on there. Beanies, underwear, socks. Yeah, I got some. Thank you for the merch. You gave us some fly merch. Yeah. We're going to do a nice little photo shoot. You know what I'm saying? Because I like that's That's one thing I love about the Runs gang. Because I like the jokes of gang, whatever, whatever. I call y'all niggas the Runs gang. You know what I'm saying? Y'all all got good, y'all all got good merch. 
you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, not to toot my own horn, you know what I'm saying? It's shit fire. But you you know, like even with the merch, like, you know, behind the scenes it was like it was love. It was like extending of resources so we could all make the vision happen. Exactly. You dig what I'm saying? Like I didn't even back then when we did the deal and, and you was in the meeting, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know the extent of how how deep the graphics yeah. and, and all of that went. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Because merch is just is, is like, you know, being in being in a um in this legacy space, so to speak, you know what I'm saying, of cannabis, the merch is more important than the weed. Exactly. Because, you know, we're trying to do something legit, actually. Exactly. We're not just trying to sell weed. That's 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 weed is not what I think any of us is is the goal for any of us. That's just the tool for us to do branding and marketing for our brands. Because all of us, I think with Billy Badasses, you know, like on some like young niggas doing bad shit. You yeah. dig what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why we always poked our chest out to have our own shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, in the pursuit of doing all of that, <laughs> here, here we have these brands, you know what I'm saying? So I love I love the fact that y'all have these the, the fly merch. We try to keep that shit on. It connects to it connects to you. And that's what I feel like too, as far as like like you even said with that situation when we came here. Like that's how I genuinely and you know off the bat met up with you through the merchandise, the fashion. Yep. To where the shit got so popping, I end up with our, in the office with you. I ain't talking about. How can we get our hands on this? What can we do to make a deal and a production out of this shit? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That right there was big to me. Because like you said, it's something more universal. Than, it's not drugs. This really... It's say? drugs transformed. Exactly. That's us putting our creativity out there in a positive way. You know what I'm saying? And it's catching on to the higher ups. Yeah, because it's legal. Everybody want to get in. How do you feel about people getting in the game? Because I'm pretty sure it's like that in Cali, right? Where the mentality, where you know it's like, it's been in the black market for so long that there's still a code of the streets. Yeah. Like, we still follow certain codes. You know what I'm saying? Now we're in a, in a, in a realm where people are getting in the game that are not from that. Yeah. They're like non fivers and straight law abiders, and they're coming into the game. How do you feel about, like, people that are willing to call police first, you know what I'm saying? Being in the game and... I honestly feel like, you know, don't try to jump into something you ain't ready for or like, stay where you at with this shit. As far as people that's not, you know, educated. Cause it's always room to learn, but it's always like, don't bring that bullshit over here. You know what I'm saying? Fucking up the program hating on the situation, watering down the situation, you know what I'm saying? If if that's the case, sit back and take more notes, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, it's the legal side, it's the black market side, everything ain't the same, though. Because the thing that puzzles me sometimes, right, the shit that sometimes irks the shit out of me when I think about it, that's why I try not to think about shit too much. You know what I'm saying? You sound like you. Yeah, I just try to, like, go with the flow of what it is, of, what I, of the seeds of how they going. You know, once you got the formula, it's like you don't want to switch it up because you don't want to, it's no point in changing it up when it's already frosty and it's hitting exactly. and it's busting, right? So what irks me sometimes is that, you know, there'll be people who have great jobs. You know, we look at, you know, when you hustling, you know, we can make as much money as we want, you know what I'm saying? But we still look at it like sometimes like, damn, I ain't really being the most I could be. Yeah. You dig what I'm saying? Way more. I could be doing way better we be doing way better, you know what I'm saying, overall. Because once you get, once, you know, you could come from the streets, you could come from poverty, you could come from all of that. But once you get a couple dollars and you got a routine to get more money, you're gonna get more money, you're gonna want more, and you're gonna want better. You know what I'm saying? If your teeth fucked up, you're gonna want new teeth. You dig what I'm saying? If you got some dusty, no jewelry, you're gonna want some jewelry. If you got some dusty clothes, you're gonna want new clothes. You know what I'm saying? So what puzzles me is how somebody could leave from a great career to want to come jump in the way of the lowest hustle that there was for 
on some, on some poverty shit. You know what I'm saying? That right there is some real shit you just said, because I'll be having that conversation too. Like, how you gonna give up a career for a short time hustle? Uh -huh. For a quick buck, but it's not, it ain't no longevity in this shit. <laughs> Yo. And then what if you don't make that quick buck? And it's mad work you gotta put in. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what niggas see. They could look at our chains and they could be like, yeah, they chains is bright. And this shit will. I know his shit will too. Right? You know what I'm saying? So, but we put in work. Night and day. Night and day being under scrutiny, being judged. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is this is not even on some black shit. This is on some scrutiny off of weed. This this is white people, black people. Hispanic people, Asian people all suffer from the same thing in this industry, which is being scrutinized for smoking weed. Yeah. You dig know what I'm saying? Yeah. And being called a loser and, and, and being looked upon as a slacker or, or a person who can't be competent. You dig know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just, that, that shit always just be like, in my mind, when new people are getting in the game. And what I be telling people who get in the game, I say, yo, listen, man, what you need to do is you need to align yourself with your nephew or your cousin or your uncle that you always looked at as a criminal and go align with him so he could teach you the game. And that's the crazy part. You dig? You said it's the crazy part. You dig? You guys want us to come and tell y'all what the game is, but why the fuck would we want to do that? Exactly. When we didn't been under the, all this, these these PTSD categories, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to give that up. We want our we want our redemption because you want what we had already. Exactly. You want what we we have been using as a tool. Now you want to take it from us. You feel what I'm saying? And make us pay you to use the tool. This shit is nuts. Shit is crazy. But um, as long as we got our own brands and our merch and our names on it. See how you got Nero's cut? You can't take that from us. You can't take that from us. You can invest all the money you want, but uh, don't take that name off of there. Mm -hmm. Are we keeping that trademark for sure? Anything else you want to talk about? You want to get off your chest? I want you to call me and be like, yo, we forgot this part right uh, here, yo. You know, like I said, I appreciate you having me. I got to, you know, we just go keep striving. I got some... Collabs coming up with the homie, uh, Young Marley Shark. Oh, yes, sir. With an ATL. Shout mm -hmm. out to him. I got some shit coming up with Ski. Cream Team. Cream Team HP Farms. That's my big bro. Putting out more music. Pretty much got some shit in the works with Ray Bomber. Fire trying Society. Get, trying to get some shit in the works with the Smokers Club. Oh, man. yeah, we here. Are you already, you know, already happens, man. <laughs> Force these invaders, man. Who we doing, man? Come and see man. But yo, listen, before we go out, though, because you are young in the game, you know what I'm saying? You ain't 30 yet. I just turned 30. Congratulations. But now that you hit 30, so you like an OG, you know what I'm saying? Give the young people some advice or anybody trying to get into this cannabis business. You know, some just some, uh, some quick words of advice for them. You know what I'm saying? Working in the cannabis business, just understand what you even shooting for at first. If you want to be a grower, if you want to fucking be a bud tender, or you want to start a brand or whatever, man, make sure you know what you want to do first and don't be all over the place. Get you a solid team because there's more than one role to be played in this shit. A thousand roles to be played, you know what I'm saying? Calculate your steps. You know what I mean? Make sure everything makes sense. And, sure and, 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 and grow your own. You want to be your own consumer. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't want nobody selling your cuts behind your back. Will you, you know do you sell cultivars to people? Like, I used to be heavy into the situation, but once the branding and, you know, the marketing and all that shit, I kind of, like, slacked on it. So I ain't really got my hands held into it. I would tell y'all to go holler for some cultivars, but next time. It's Nero's Cut. I'm Shai Spuzz, Mr. Ike Key. This fucking heavy smoke. You know what it is, man. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow us. Make sure you do all that YouTube shit. Like it. Save it. Just don't flag it. Don't put a thumb down. Don't do that shit. Just thumbs up. 
Holler at us. You already know the vibes. <laughs>